This is a geek leader. Hey guys, John Rauda, and I'm back again with episode 31 of A Geek Leader. And today I want to talk a little bit about taking care of ourselves. Um, a lot of times as leaders, we like to take care of others before ourselves. And sometimes when we do that, when we when we dish out too much out of our well, we don't have enough to uh, you know to help those others because we haven't taken care of ourselves. Um, when I last time I flew on a plane, I had my kids with me. And I remember the flight attendant, she went through, you know, the whole safety check and the spill. And one of the things they said was, in the event that the cabin loses pressure, an oxygen mask will automatically drop down in front of you. You know, and then it went through the, the process of starting the flow of oxygen. And then they said, if you're traveling with a child or someone who requires assistance, be sure to secure your mask first and then assist the other person. And being someone with kids, I, you know, it kind of struck me as a little odd because I always want to take care of my kids first. I always want to make sure that they're okay before switching gears to myself. And I was thinking, you know, I'm a grown up. I can probably hold my breath a little bit longer than my, you know, three year old. So why would I want to take care of myself before them? But then I thought about it a little bit more. And, you know, what would happen if I'm blacked out because I didn't have the oxygen? Then there'd be nobody to take care of the kid. But if I can secure myself, then I can take care of the kid and have more time, uh, and we'd both be safe. And the same thing is true with, when it comes to leadership. If the leader doesn't take care of themselves, then there's nothing for them to provide and pour into their team and to take care of the team. So what I want to do is go through just seven little tips and things that you can do to make sure that you are protecting yourself, that you are... Um, making sure that you're taken care of and that your well is full so that you can fill others. Um, so we'll go through this quick little seven things and then um, and, and you know call this an episode. should be pretty quick. Um, number one, take care of yourself physically. You know when you are in a good place physically, when you're um, you know feel good about yourself in that standpoint and you know you're eating healthy, you are exercising, you have a lot more energy and a lot more that you can pour into your team. Um, uh, I re we recently had a baby. Um, we have a three-month-old now. And for the last month of my wife's pregnancy, all the way up until probably another month ago, um, I you know, didn't really exercise nearly as much. Um, <clears throat> she started making fun of me about not going to the gym and wasting my gym membership. And during that time, I started feeling, you know, I didn't have as much energy. I couldn't pour into my into my family, into my team, into those around me because I didn't have the energy to do so. And a lot of that's just because I wasn't running anymore. I, I, my exercise you know, level was down. I wasn't eating as healthy. So um, when we made the shift and started eating better and started running again and exercising more, I found that I had a lot more energy and I could you know, I felt happier. You know, I wasn't so grumpy. Um, I was able to think a little clearer. My mind was, was, was uh, you know, in just a much better place. So physical health goes a long way when it comes to your mental energy. So take care of yourself physically. Um, number two is take care of yourself mentally. You know, take time to work on your mind. Um, you know, some people meditate and that's how they work on their mind. Um, I think you need to train your mind just like you train your body. You need to learn more. You need to try, try to learn something new. Preferably something not related to what you're doing on a daily basis. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say you are a, um, you know, a back-end developer. Well, you know, take an online class on front-end development, or take a, um, a Python class that may not be related to what you're working on, or um, learn more about digital marketing or um, network security privacy, uh, GDPR, something that's slightly different than what you're working on on a daily basis. This is a couple of things. One, it expands your skill set, you know, and helps you be able to communicate with people in other groups and understand a wider range of things, but also it keeps your mind working. Whenever we stop learning new things, our mind, you know, goes into a place where it doesn't want to learn. So when something new comes, it's more challenging. But if we're continually learning new things, then it gets into a rhythm of learning and a posture of being a student. One of the things that I heard someone say that we need to be um, be a white belt in, in, in learning. And you know, going back to martial arts, you know, white belts are the ones that they don't know anything. They're trying to absorb as much as they can, and we need to have that in our, in our careers. Um, even if you are well established, you are the senior lead on a project, you're um, you know, a senior engineer, whatever you are, high up in your career, you need to take the posture of a white belt and always try to learn something new. Take care of yourself mentally. Um, 
Uh, next up, number three, is take time for deep work. Uh, Cal Newport wrote a book about deep work. I'll link it in the uh, show notes if you want to go to it and check it out. But what he talks about is in that book is you can't get to the important stuff that really matters if you only spend a few minutes on it. So you need to you know, schedule large blocks of time where you can immerse yourself into a single task or a single problem or a single opportunity that you can focus on to come up with a really unique, creative powerful important solution and um, that's where deep work happens is when we can allocate the time to do that if i'm going to give myself 20 minutes to work on something i'm not going to get deep into it i'm only going to scratch the surface so block off you know two three hours to immerse yourself into a problem to really understand it when i say block it off i mean you know shut the door if you're in a queue put on headphones do something where you're not going to be distracted turn off your slack notifications um always close outlook when i start something like this so i'm not distracted um and just block that time off your calendar pretend like you're in a meeting or you're not here uh, and if you're working in a busy environment where people come up to you your cube or your desk a lot you know i, I found in my, my last job one, one thing i would do is i would book a conference room for just myself and i would go to the conference room and have a meeting with just myself to get into that deep work zone. Um, make time for brainstorming. A lot of people don't do, do this. I, actually, I don't know of very many people that do this. But I schedule periods of, you know, chunks of time, an hour here, an hour there, uh, every week to do brainstorming, just to think of new things that we, we could try to implement with my team, new things that um, uh, are problems that we have. I'll, I'll put that in the calendar title that, you know, brainstorm about blank. And we'll try to come up with a solution for that problem or think more about it. And that's not time where I have necessarily a scheduled agenda. It's where I want to close everything out and just brainstorm, just think. I usually open up, um, I'm on my Mac, so I open up my notes uh, app and I'll just start typing notes, just start typing ideas, things. Um, And quite frankly, about 80% of them I'm going to throw away. They're not going to be good ideas. But sometimes I have to get through that 80% of bad ideas to find the one good idea. Um, I heard an author saying one time that, you know, he had to write the nine bad pages to find that one tenth good page. And the same thing happens when you're brainstorming. So schedule time for that. Otherwise, you're not going to come up with those new ideas. You know, they, they don't just happen. I mean, sometimes they do, but very rarely do they just happen. They come in the margins and the white spaces where you can clear your mind and schedule time to think. Um, <clears throat> all right, number five, make room for growth. Now, a lot of us, we, we, we take on new projects and new tasks, but we never get rid of the old. And we become basically mental hoarders of, of, of ideas and things and, and, and tasks. Um, so what I want you guys to do to help make room for growth is to prune relentlessly. Prune your less valuable work. Prune the things that you've started but you're not going to finish because they don't add value. Instead of just keeping them around because you started them and you thought about them, prune them. Um, one idea is I had... I had uh, you know, I wrote a book called What's HTML about HTML development, you know, several years ago, and I bought the domains for, you know, what's PHP, what's JavaScript, what's CSS, what's SQL, and I had the ideas I was going to write all these books, and I've kind of kept those domains for years, but I haven't done anything with them. So I just deleted all the websites, you know, to prune that away from me um, so that I'm not uh, focused or I don't have that little bit, you know, things, you know, keeping me from, from being able to grow. So prune re- relentlessly, prune the things that are – that you do that aren't valuable. Look at your calendar. Look at meetings that you go to that you don't offer any good input for other people and you don't get much out of and prune those. Now, sometimes that, that requires you know, going to your boss or to the other people in the meeting and letting them know that, hey, I'm not going to be able to attend this meeting you know, for X number of weeks or maybe going forward and let me know if there's things that happen. Maybe send me an agenda or um, a meeting recap for the notes, the minutes of the meeting to see if there's anything that I need to do and just prune that out of your life. All right, and number six is empower others. If you do lead people, um, they will never be able to grow if you don't give them the opportunity to grow. If you don't delegate things to them and give them the opportunity to, to move forward, then they'll never grow themselves. So a lot of times people think that when you delegate things or empower others that you're you're pushing things off onto them but in reality you're giving them the opportunity to step up to make decisions to complete tasks to do things that they normally wouldn't have to gain experience that isn't necessarily in their current role so it's really important for you to do that not just for yourself but for those that you lead all right number seven disconnect now i have some employees that they'll take off work but they still work you know, they bring their phone with them. They're constantly checking Slack. They're constantly checking their emails. And 
the problem with that is you're never getting away from work. You're always on. And when you're always on, you know, fresh ideas don't come to you. When you're always on, you're not taking care of yourself. You're burning out. It's a recipe for burnout. Um, several years ago at my, my last job, I went to my boss and basically just told him straight up that when I leave the office between you know 5, 5.30, whenever it is that I leave, I'm going to turn off my cell phone. I'm going to put it away. I'm not going to keep it with me. I'm not going to be answering emails. I'm not going to be responding to, to anything until around 8.30 when my kids go to bed. And that's my disconnect time. And honestly, that's worked out really well. I still do that today. I basically disconnect with a few exceptions. If our CEO calls, I'll probably take that call. But I'm not going to be opening Outlook and checking emails or checking Slack while while my kids are awake and I'm, I'm at home because that's my disconnect time. And when I go on vacation, you know, I'm not going to be checking my phone constantly. Now, maybe when my kids are at nap, I may scroll through the emails to see if there's anything you know pertinent or check my voicemails. But... I'm disconnecting for a good portion of that time. Whereas in the past, I was like always on. If I was on vacation, I'm sitting there scrolling through my phone constantly. Now I lock my phone in the safe at the hotel and I'm gone. And I'm not with, I'm not using my phone until nighttime. So everybody needs that time to disconnect because what I found is when I disconnect, I come back you know, with a fury. I come back far more intense at, at my job and better. I get things done. I, I think clearer. And even when I just have those small moments of disconnection every day or every week, that helps me as well. Whereas when there's days that think, you know, weeks that, that go on when there's problems or big projects we're working on and you don't get time to disconnect, I find that, you know, I'm, I, I'm not as creative as a, of a thinker. I don't problem solve as well. I don't troubleshoot as well. There's so many things that don't happen because I'm always on and, and it's just slowly, you know, wearing me down. Um, <clears throat> So it's really important to disconnect from time to time. You know, you can imagine it as if you were, you know, running a race. You know, when you have those short breaks where you can stop and rest and then run again, you know, you perform better than if you didn't have that break. You, you just wore out. You know, when you get to take a nap, I know I've done some, you know, really long uh, relay races, you know, 200-mile relay races, and during that time uh, you're off and the other people are running, you're rejuvenating. Whereas if you had to run back-to-back -back legs in a race, you know, you, you just – you wear out you don't have time to to, to uh, recoup and your mind's the same way so you have to disconnect from time to time so the whole summary of all these things you know take care of yourself physically take care of yourself mentally make time for deep work make time for brainstorming make room for growth empower others and disconnect from time to time all these will help you put your oxygen mask on first they'll help you take care of yourself as a leader and when you take care of yourself you have the opportunity and the ability and the energy to take care of others so i hope this helps um if you're listening to this and you haven't subscribed please go and subscribe either on itunes or stitcher or wherever you you got this podcast and you're listening um and uh, for more information on deep work, you can go to the website. I have a link that you can click on at a geekleader.com and uh, check that out. All right. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't left me a review in iTunes, please do that. It really helps the show. Thanks so much.